Welcome back to Anderton's TV. I am joined by Ben because that means we're going to be using lots of gain and playing super fast. Um, what have we got today, Ben? We have got the very exciting Music Man Kaizen guitars, which were designed with Ernie Ball and Music Man and Mr. Tosin Abassi. Awesome. Well, we better unbox them then. Right, there we are. Okay, we've got four cases. All I know is we've got two six strings and two seven strings. So let's do a random, uh, here we go. I'm gonna show you guys the first one. He says. <laughs> here we go, we're in, we're in. It's a vacuum sealed. Ooh. Now that, look at that. Who's this handsome, dashing young man on the postcard that we see here? Uh, <laughs> Uh, right, so I've got a seven string in, I don't know what the official name of the color is, like a primer gray, isn't it, kind yeah. of vibe. Uh, oh, nice, roasted maple neck. You always know with Music Man, the finishing is first class. Oh, we've got some crazy body contours. Yeah. Some weird banjo machine heads. Wow, I'm excited. What's you got there, Ben? Right, let's have a look. Oh, that's a better color. Oh wow, so I've got a six string version. Are they uh, all fan fret, these models? They're, well, they're all multi-scale, yeah. Um, and they've all got what's called an infinity radius as well. So it never f ends. It just never ends. <laughs> wow. Never, it's just gonna keep going. Uh, okay, so that's the six string. And it, are the other two guitars we've got just the same, but different colors? I must, let's have a look. Okay, yeah, so right, got... so yeah, that's it. Basically the same again, but in the sort of grayer color. Deal or no deal there. Oh, you got a white one. Oh, that's nice. I didn't actually, we'll have to confirm on screen now. Is this the complete selection of colors for this model or are there other ones? Who knows? Now let me help you with that case Thank there. Thank you. Okay, so here we have uh, the Kaizen in both its six and seven string variant. We've got three of uh, the four colors. So the missing color is a, a satin black color. Um, but we're gonna have a play with these. I have questions, Ben. I have questions about the design of this guitar and Tozen Abasi himself. But mm. my first question is, what is a Kaizen? Kaizen, how is it even pronounced? So Kaizen is a Japanese business philosophy around continued improvement. What? Well, you know what? I, I tell you, the, the, um, some of the staff who've been at Anderton's for longer than they care to remember will, will know that, uh, yes, the circle of continual improvement is something that we studied hard in the senior management team at Anderton's about 15 years ago and, uh, and never put into practice. No, I'm joking. Um, so, okay. So, Tosin, I'm sort of... Tell me about his sort of animal as leaders and, and his sort of solo project. Why is Tosin sort of one of the kind of the, the sort of the more recent generations of superstar guitar play? You know, what, what, is, what is his thing? I mean, he, he's innovative in a lot of different styles. I mean, that sort of the thumping sort of practice with the thumb is just, he was really the great sort of person behind that. I know there's sort of he's derived it from other players, but he is the one who really put it on the map there. Um, various exercises, he did a great video recently with, I think it was Devin Townsend, Petrucci and Rick Beato, where he was explaining a lot of this and like the selective picking. And they all just looked at him like he was on another planet, which he is, <laughs> he's playing, let's be honest. Um, but yeah, he's just, animals as leaders sort of there, that super, I mean, he, I saw a comment the other day, he, he said he writes music to challenge people. And I think, you know, that sort of extends into many of his aspects, whether it's the Abassi guitars, you know, it's meant to kind of challenge you as an audience, whether it's an audience or a consumer of various Abassi concepts or whatever it is to challenge you and sort of put something out there that goes, this isn't normal, but it does actually make sense. That's a great segue because I know the Abassi his signature concept guitar yeah. has kind of been rumbling around for years. and But it seemed like in a fairly sort of quick succession, 
that Abassi Concept guitar was announced and then within a year or two the collaboration with Music Man to make the Kaizen came out and the two guitars are quite different so I'm, I'm sort of I was when I first heard he was going to do something with Music Man I just assumed it would be like a more affordable production version of his sort of concept guitar but it's really in fact on screen now is the guitar I'm talking about and you can see it's very different to, to this so so what do you think the what do you think the kind of the the vibe is behind the Kaizen I mean it's what again like you say I was expecting it to be very sort of similar spec wise but to be honest with you there's not a lot that's similar on this compared to something like one of the Abassi concept models. So you haven't got the Fishman Fluence pickups in it at all. Um, completely different for starters. The body shape is, you know, slightly more accessible to look at, but still quite innovative. And it's, it's obviously very modern looking. The tuners, again, very different. You've got the Steinberger um, tuners on this one. So it is meant to be a very sleek looking thing, which is, Again, why I'm assuming he's gone for these amazing block satin finishes on them as well. Um, but yeah, they are just completely different animals. I think, you know, I, I would certainly, you know, I feel like I could pick this up and generally play a lot of different styles in it. Whereas I think naturally going with something like the Abassi, I would feel a little bit <laughs> lost in, in the body shape. You know, I know that body shape in particular was very unique to him. I read an interview years ago where he said, I think this, this goes back to even the Ibanez days where he was saying they sat down in the room and basically got a photo of him or something and basically drew the shape into his body and went, well, yeah, that, it looks odd, but that's how you naturally sit with it and that's how that shape was born. Um, whereas this is obviously completely different, you know, very, obviously it derives from that sort of S type with, you know, the sort of the two horns on it but is nowhere near it still let's let's have a listen to one before we get into to more chat so mm. two minds because visually it's so far from the type of vintage vibey guitar yeah. that I would normally like and again I'm not necessarily saying it doesn't have to be strats and tellies and all no. that kind of stuff I, but you know I'm, I'm but it's very modern I can see the music man influences from things like the Petrucci and even the St Vincent and stuff like that yeah definitely but once you start to appreciate the sort of ergonomics of the design, yeah. like why is that carve here? Why is the neck shaped like this? Why are the positions where they are, the knobs where they are? You do, you do have to appreciate that as a tool for playing the guitar, it's, it's just genius level. It's a guitar like this isn't like they've gone, do you want a signature model? And yeah. whacked his name on something. This has been crafted from the ground up and gone, okay, we need to look at stuff like, you know, the radius. We need to do this. Why? Because this, that, you know. So, like, you've got what they've called, and I haven't seen this on any other guitar, you've got what they call an infinity radius on this, where it's absolutely bonkers, where it's designed so you can see the fretboard pretty much from every angle, and the fretboard markers are positioned that way as well. So it's slightly more curved. On is your... it curved on the bass end, isn't it? Yeah. It's more curved on the bass on the end, bass it goes end flatter on the treble end. And flat on the treble end, which is, I mean, you're combining that with the multi-scale 
sort of design. So you've got this hybrid of like a what I cast like a Fender and a Gibson scale length, where you've it's you know you're going from it's 24 and three quarter inch to 25 and a half as well. So you've got perfect intonation across the fingerboard. It's going to help with tuning stability, particularly if you're using like Lee and I've got the seven string versions behind us here. It's massively crucial for something Dude. like that. I think let's go through each feature individually. Yeah. So we'll just start with the tones. Probably the 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 you know the one feature I guess everybody's going, yeah, what does it sound like? So you've got custom design music man pickups. Yeah. One is a humbucker, one is a mini humbucker. Very simple switching, only three positions, there's no coil taps or anything like that. So we go neck position is the full humbucker. The middle position is the two outside coils wired like they would be in like a you know position two or four on a strap. And then the bridge position is just the full bridge humbucker. So could you do us some tones, maybe yeah. you know, a mix of clean and dirty tones? So yeah, we'll, we'll start off with some clean stuff here. So this is the, the mini humbucker neck position, so. It's quite nice, still quite articulate and clean. If you why, think is it, why is it slanted? Um, so it's slanted because it's going to give you a bit more response on the top end and a tighter low end, which, I mean, if you're then especially digging into the seven string side of things, you, you're going to need it, you know. Um, middle position actually gives you the two outer coils of both the mini humbucker and the full humbucker there, um, which gives you this really nice glassy, almost, dare I say, like piezo-ish articulation on it, which is quite nice. And then we get to the humbucker, which is probably the bit that was caught my curiosity looking at the specs of it. So they call this a HT Custom, which stands for heat treated. Um, they haven't actually said what specifically <laughs> goes on behind that, which is- I love it. Is an yes. industry knows? secret, I suppose. Yes. But the one thing that you <laughs> notice, or I noticed instantly, as soon as you play this, the output is extraordinary on this. It still has that clarity, but you'll hear it now. Let's hear that with some gain. Yeah, that, that's what we're all here for. <laughs> <laughs> isn't it snappy yeah. kind of i guess that's that's the vibe of, of the tone that he's going for and, and to a certain degree probably what you'd expect from a guitar with a trem system and a bolt on neck yeah um, um can we the the trem system is obviously custom designed and must be yeah. a bit of a challenge because you've got this multi-scale bridge incorporated into a trem system um how's it how does it feel on you it feels nice i mean it it's it's not super you know you, you can tell that there's enough spring tension in there so it doesn't you know if you're just playing something slightly cleaner you want i'm fascinated by this sort of scoop that's been <laughs> taken out the back of the guitar here which again fair play to uh, music man here they've obviously had to mold a back plate that takes into account that sort of scooped middle bit as well. It's beautifully made. And then you're sitting there going, so, so what is the point? But then you find this natural position yeah. where it comes up against your torso here and just hugs into your body. And it's, it is a really, really comfortable guitar to sit with. The balance is crazy. It's yeah. like most guitars, you can kind of, even nicely balanced guitars, you kind of feel, or even just like there's a tiny bit one way or the other. But this is like, I reckon if you got, you could probably put it on a finger here and get it to balance. Yeah. Um, but yeah, the, the neck carve, the neck carve, I guess you've probably seen this done before, but it's, you know, very comfortable to play. Um, interesting, I think the carve on this top horn 
uh, does give you a sense that you can really get your thumb in there, uh, you know, comfortably. Um, what do you? How would you describe the neck carve on this? I mean, it's what I would expect. I mean, it almost feels similarish to like, if you've ever picked up like a, a Music Man Luke, something like that. Very, very slim, sort of in the in the the bottom end of it. You know, if you get sort of the lower frets. It, again, I mean, radius wise, if you're toasting, I mean, one of the Animals Leaders songs, it's Cafo or something, where he's doing this ridiculous sweet picking up there. He's going to need every access, you know, possible. I yeah, it's just, is... it's comfortable. There's not one part where I go, I don't like it there. It maybe, you know, it doesn't work for chords. It where, just works. Where it does remind me of Music Man Necks is they always have this oiled sort of satin yeah. finish, which immediately feels comfortable to play. It's when, I think when you pick up a, a relic Fender Strat neck and they've, they've kind of taken all the finish off and got it back to that bare wood and it just feels like you've played it for a thousand years. Yeah. You get that feel, I think, with Music Man with this style of neck. I think it's a slightly, for me, it feels more D-shaped than C-shaped. So although you can feel yeah. the curve in the sort of heels, it's pretty flat where your thumb would go. It starts to feel slightly more rounded as you get up past the 10th fret. Um, but it's, it's a familiar enough feeling neck that if you've played, you know, strats all your life, yeah. you know, you're going to go, yeah, it feels right. The fan fret nature of these guitars always visually freaks me out. Yeah. And then you just have to play it and, it's and you realise that... That's what everyone who even like, you know, heard like arts, they're promoting their guitars have got fan frets. You just say, you just got to get on, get on with it. Yeah. Don't overthink it because you do. Like, I've, I've been playing at a dingle bass for a while now and if I sit there and think, oh, that's looking a bit odd, you then start to fall over yourself a yeah. little bit. But they just... If you sit down and play it, it just makes sense, you know, particularly if you're standing up the way that it's articulated across the fretboard in conjunction with how your hand's going to be if you're doing any quicker runs, it all lines up symmetrically perfectly, to be honest with you. Now, I, I wonder again, he's, he's elected to put these um, Steinberger tuners on yeah. here, which is why you can't see any keys either side of the headstock. All the action is happening on the back here. Now, Steinberger tuners are pretty uncommon other than on Steinberger guitars, mm. and they basically work... I don't know, I suppose you, even tuners like old, you know, Gibson Firebirds and yeah. stuff would have had a sort of a, that style of tuner where it's just a, um, a, 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 a knob on the back that you tune. It's obviously a locking tuner as well. Um, so it's a perfectly effective tuner, but I suppose I wonder if it's a... I wonder if it's just an aesthetic to just try and, you know, not have anything on the headstock. It might be. I mean, it's all very sort of sleep the way it moves it's you don't just... Im you don't immediately even notice that there aren't any keys on the side of the no. head do you it's a real illusionary guitar is that even a word um i'm gonna play because i kind of feel like i don't think i don't think this is for guitar players that want to play in the style of toes and abasi i think mm. this is for guitar players that want to explore what is innovative about an electric guitar yeah. these days? Yeah. I am plugged into a single channel um, Friedman Pink Taco here, so I haven't got a clean channel as such. I'm just doing it all off the volume control. I wonder if you could float the trim system. I, f I feel like I want it very slightly floating just to be able to get those more bit. subtle vibrato. If we go a bit more volume. You're, you're completely right about the fan fret thing throwing my subconscious. Yeah. It's not, it's like, oh, they're not yeah. where they normally are. <laughs> but if you just don't think about it, they are in a perfectly natural position. 
big difference between the two. <laughs> You know what it reminds me of? Yeah. It reminds me of the vibe that the Parker Fly was going down. Yeah. So it wasn't trying to be like metal or anything like that. It was just trying to be innovative. Yeah. So it should have appealed to any genre. It would have worked with like any genre really of music, but it had to, but it would only really appeal to someone that wanted to go and explore what innovation could do. Yeah. And I kind of feel like, so I, I, I don't, I think you, sh you should avoid thinking that this is a, a guitar for someone that's trying to do extreme levels of playing like Tozin would do. It's very light as well. So if you're just, even just at that level of going, what have you got that <laughs> won't give me backache? Um, I, I just wanted to point out actually, when you were mentioning about the output of the, of the, uh, the bridge humbucker there, it's not so, I think we've all played guitars, whether it's like, you know, a HSS or mm -hmm. something where you notice this output is almost unmanageable. Actually, it work, It lends itself perfectly for when you're in that middle position, getting, dare I say, I mean, you're gonna get it with the outer calls, but that single coil vibe. But the one thing that's important there is the volume doesn't drop out. We've right. all played guitars where you go into those in-between positions and the, it's unusable really. Right. But actually with that, it works really well. You could. You could take this on a function or something easily. I want to play it. I, I, I've got to, I, I definitely know that, and I'm sure some people will relate to this, I'm struggling with what will people's visual perception of me be if I turn up at a gig with, with this? Will people expect me to play like Tozin or, or yeah. one of those kind of... Again, it's all subconscious, but I'm very conscious of the fact that things like this Infinity Radius are going to be different to what I've You've played before. You've just got to talk to yourself in your head. Yeah, like, like, don't worry about yeah. it. I'm just... It's, it's congratulations again to... Yeah. I think Music Man, they've got that... They just do everything. Everything they make out of the US in California is is just, they don't do just, don't oh yeah, corners. just let's just knock out another Strat copy type yeah. thing. You know, it is, they, they yeah, you, if you play a, a, a Petrucci or something like that, you know, oh well look, I mean, what can we say? Is there anything else? Can you play the seven string for a bit? I can attempt to. <laughs> can you imagine seeing Eric at the Albert Hall coming out and playing one of these? I don't know, maybe, maybe you can. Um, well, look, that was cool. Um, 
I haven't told you the price yet. Maybe you already know. <laughs> They're really expensive. Uh, so yes, if you're sitting there going, oh yeah, I, I might ask my mum and dad to get me one of these at Christmas. But they deserve to be expensive. Yeah. That's the thing. It's You can tell this craftsmanship's gone into yeah. them. It justifies Maybe it. Maybe your dad's Bill Gates. they will get you three. I don't know. But yeah, they're about 4,000 quid, aren't they? Yeah. So as yet, I've not heard any rumours or rumblings about these coming as a sterling model. But who knows? Maybe they will in the future and then it will be way more affordable. Um, but thank you, Ben, for coming in uh, and no taking worries. us through this. I kind of feel we should do some sort of weird jam out where I play something, you know, simple and old school and you noodle <laughs> over the top of it in a modern way. Uh, but look, that's it. Links are below. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. <laughs>